Good day learners! Welcome to our new lesson. For today's video, we're gonna talk about the process on how plants create their own food. Plant leaves are the essential parts that can make food. Like a factory, the leaves contain machinery that can manufacture food out of raw materials and energy. The important process of food making is called the photosynthesis, which means to put together by light. It is the most typical manufacturing process in the world and one of the most complicated process. Like a factory, the leaves need raw materials to manufacture products. Raw materials for this process are carbon dioxide and water. Now, these raw materials need the energy to make Food. The sunlight captured by the chlorophyll provides energy to combine carbon dioxide and water. When the chlorophyll converts the raw materials, they become glucose or sugar and oxygen. Photosynthesis is a chemical process which can explain by this general equation. The raw materials are carbon dioxide plus water converted through light energy inside the chlorophyll and the product are glucose and oxygen. Now, this is the balance equation of photosynthesis. There are six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water to form one molecule of glucose or sugar, and six molecules of oxygen. Now, there are two stages of photosynthesis, the light-dependent reaction and the light-independent reaction. Where does the process of light-dependent reaction begin? Light is the source of energy for photosynthesis, and the first set of reaction which begin the process requires light. Thus, it is named light reaction or light-dependent reaction. Chloroplast capture sunlight. In the light-dependent reaction that takes place in the grana, light strikes chlorophyll or an accessory pigment within a chloroplast. It energizes electrons within that molecule. Chlorophyll and electron carriers are organized into units called photosystems. When we say photosystem, it is a functional and structural unit involved in photosynthetic reaction. Now, there are three parts of photosystems. The reaction center, which is a type of chlorophyll that can absorb light energy and readily release in electron. Electron transport chain, a series of electron carriers. The antenna, which is composed of chlorophyll pigments that gathered and absorb light until it reaches the reaction center. Now, there are two types of photosystem. Photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Photosystem 1 absorbs red light with a wavelength of 700 nanometer, while photosystem 2 absorbs red light with a wavelength of 680 nanometer. Now, there are two sub phase of light-dependent reaction. We have the cyclic light reaction and the non-cyclic light reaction. The cyclic light reaction starts with the photosystem 1, wherein P700 is activated to absorb light energy and release high-energy electrons. Two photons from either the red or blue end of the spectrum fit the sensitive response of the pigments. They are captured by the antenna complex and transferred to the photosystem 1 reaction center, which contributes to high-energy electrons to primary electron receptor. They are passed to pyridoxine, an iron-containing protein which acts as an electron carrier. The second electron carrier, which is plastokinone, carries the electrons to complex of two cytochromes. In the process, the energy passed along the series of electron carriers lead to the ADP to ATP conversion. The electrons are returned by plastocyanine to the P700 pigment in the reaction center to complete the cycle. Now, let's proceed with non-cyclic light reaction. This reaction involves photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, but this time it begins with photosystem 2, which is P680. It is activated to absorb light energy and release high-energy electrons. Peyopitin carry excited electrons from photosystem 2 and dump them off at the plastokinone. The high-energy electron also cascade a series of electron carriers or electron transport chain. Water splits into oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen is released as oxygen gas, which is one of the byproducts of photosynthesis. On the other hand, hydrogen ions temporarily stay within the thylakoid space and contribute to the hydrogen gradient. Chemiosmosis occurs as hydrogen ions flows down electrochemical gradient through ATP synthase complexes. When we say chemiosmosis, it is the process of diffusion of ions. 
across a selectively permeable membrane. Low energy electrons leaving the electron transport system enter PS1 or photosystem 1. When the photosystem 1 pigment complex absorbs solar energy, high energy electrons leave reaction center chlorophyll and are captured by an electron acceptor. Light re-energizes the electrons and they travel down a second electron transport chain. Hydrogen ions bond to NADP plus to form a more stable energy storage molecule which is the NADPH. NADPH is energy and hydrogen atoms will be used to help build sugar in the second stage of photosynthesis. When we say NADPH, it is sometimes called as hot hydrogen. It is another high energy substance like ATP. Now for us to better understand the non-cyclic reaction, I will show you an interactive simulation. You can use this interactive simulation at the Bioman Biology site. So here we're going to choose the light-dependent reaction. Light-dependent reaction happens inside the chloroplast, specifically in the thylakoid membrane. Now this is the thylakoid membrane up close. Notice the location of the stroma and the thylakoid space. Photolysis step 1. It happens when light strikes chlorophyll in the photosystem 2. Remember I said a while ago that Non-cyclic reaction happens or begins at photosystem 2. This causes electrons to become excited or gain energy. These excited electrons leave photosystem 2 and begin to travel down the proteins of electron transport chain. For photolysis step 2, water split to replace electron loss by photosystem 2. So because of the split of water, it produces hydrogen ions and oxygen. Oxygen becomes the byproduct of the photosynthesis. The excited electrons continue their journey down the electron transport chain. As the electron travels down the chain, their energy is used to pump hydrogen ions or protons across the membrane into the thylakoid space. This results in high concentration of hydrogen in the thylakoid space and lower concentration in the stroma. So as you can see, there are a lot of hydrogen ions in the thylakoid space. That means it is a high concentration of hydrogen ions, while low concentration in the stroma. The hydrogen ions will naturally move from high to low concentration by the process of diffusion. The only place on the membrane that lets hydrogen ions through is a protein called ATP synthase. This ATP will be used during the Calvin cycle as an energy source to help produce sugar. Calvin cycle takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. So let's return to our electrons to finish the journey down the electron transport chain. The electron continues down the electron transport chain to photosystem 1. Light strike to photosystem 1 causing the electrons to get excited again. These excited electrons then continue down a second electron transport chain. The electrons are used to reduce NADP plus to form NADPH. NADPH is also an electron carrier. NADPH carries the electrons to transport stroma where they will be used in the Calvin cycle to make organic molecules like sugar. So as you can see, the product of the 9 cyclic reaction proceed to the stroma where Calvin cycle happens. Now the overall product of light dependent reactions are ATP, NADPH, and oxygen. Now we're going to discuss the light independent reaction or the Calvin cycle on our next video. So that's it. See you in our next lesson. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you will be notified for more videos like this.